Okay, somebody asked me a question about one of the, the problems on the quizzes, and I don't want to do your problem. Um, so I created another one that I think is um, the same idea. Okay, so, <clears throat> but it says, um, write the equation of the tangent line to a circle at a point. Okay, so this point is on the circle. What I did here, excuse me, the bumpy ride for a second. Okay. I came over and I, I graphed it in Desmos. Um, so you'll notice what I have there is there's the circle, there's the center, I found where the center was, um, and then there's that particular point. So that's what we're going to work off of. Um, so basically they're asking us to find the equation of the tangent line. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. The tangent line through that point. Okay, if you remember, okay, let's see. So you, we can use Desmos to help us check. Um, the more you can do it by hand, the better. Um, so basically, so where were we? We had um, our center at three, negative two, and then our point over here was at 11, four. So three, negative two, and this is 11, four. And this, okay, so that was the radius of our circle. Well, keep in mind that the tangent line is going to be perpendicular to that. Okay, so to find that tangent line, well, we've got a point, we need a slope, and um, we know that whatever this slope is, we want the negative reciprocal to find that one. So the slope of the slope of this line is, I don't know if this works out nicely or not, I just made it up, and it's too early in the morning. Um, our slope of the radius is equal to change in y, 4 minus a negative 2 over 11 minus 3, that's equal to 6 over 8, which can reduce to 3 fourths. Okay, um, and then when we look at, so then therefore the slope of the tangent is going to be equal to a negative 4 thirds. All right, so now we want to write the equation of, that, of this line. We've got a point and a, and a slope. So sometimes you can either use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 and plug in. What I notice is that I'm going to have a fraction here that has to multiply by x, and it's not pretty. Um, but by all means, knock yourself out. What I like to do instead um, is, is I take the slope formula. Slope is equal to the change in y, so I'm just going to say y minus y1 over the change in x, x minus x1. And then I'm going to plug my values in. The slope is negative 4 thirds. y minus the y value we care about is 4. The x value we care about is 11. And now when I cross multiply, um, things are easier to work with. So I have this negative 4x plus 44 equals 3y minus 12. I'm going to get to the same spot if I had done it over here. Um, the advantage, let's see, I don't even remember how, well, okay. I can subtract this is negative 4x minus 3y equals a negative, what is that, 56? Um, so this is almost standard form. Standard form is when this guy, well, hang on, this is standard form. Standard form is when the first term is positive and everybody is an integer, okay? And it's ax plus by equals c. Or I could have come from here and I could have put it into slope-intercept form. So I would add this, so I have a, a 3y equals negative 4x plus 56. Is 56 divisible by 3? No, it's not. Okay, and this is why I didn't do this way, um, because I knew that I was going to get negative 4 thirds x plus 56 over 3, and I would have had to deal with fractions throughout. I like this method of using the slope, um, because then it gets me here where I only I see fractions at the very end and not leading up to it. Um, but basically, yeah, I mean, by all means, use that if you like it. But that's what we need to do. You have to find the slope of the radius. Then that tells you that the, the slope of the tangent line. And once you have a point and a slope, you're back in Algebra 1. Okay, so good luck. Go try the problem on the quizzes. Um, hopefully that made sense.